Hello, my friends. Welcome to the third week of our Advent weekday devotions. Uh, this week, beginning uh, to look at a few of the things that John's Gospel tells us about Jesus. John's Gospel is a little unique, and John has a number of of ways both that Jesus refers to himself and ways that John talks about Jesus. So we're going to look at those this week as we anticipate Christmas this coming Sunday. To go back to the beginning of John's Gospel, the first verses, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. As John begins his Gospel, he doesn't start with angels coming to Mary or Joseph. He doesn't start with shepherds or wise men or a trip to Bethlehem. He doesn't start with a baby. John goes all the way back to Genesis. He takes us all the way back to the very beginning. And in doing that, he identifies Jesus with God's very first and eternal purpose for the world. In the beginning, echoes the first words of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you remember how Genesis goes? Each day, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God said, let there be, and there is. All the way through Genesis chapter one, God speaks and something happens. Interesting, interesting note about language. We're going to learn some more language today. In Hebrew, the same three letters are used to express the idea of speaking and the content of what is spoken. The noun, word, uses the same three letters as the verb, to speak. It's a sense, in a sense, you could say that when it says in Genesis, and God said, let there be light, and God worded, let there be light. But it doesn't simply mean in Genesis that God made some, some vocal noises. Because when we bring that into Greek, the Greek idea and the word that's used here for word represents more than just simply a, a noun or a, a method of speaking but also talks about reason, sense, understanding. The Word, as John is using this name, using this as a title for Jesus, the Word refers to God's reason, his, his purpose, the means by which he expresses himself. We use words to communicate. I'm using words to communicate right now. And in Genesis, and again in John, God is interacting with his creation, helping the world understand his purpose for it, communicating with his creation. You see, all the way back in Genesis, God had a plan. And creation had a purpose. And, it had, and God had a good desire for all the things he was calling into being. And then, things kind of went off the rails. When humanity contradicted God's good desire, God's reasonable, and his, his expectation for the world, there was only one thing that God could do. Back here in chapter 1 of John. A little farther down, John says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. My favorite translation of that verse is, the Word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. See, God didn't simply stay back at a distance from his creation. He actually came down into this broken world, the world that had gone off the rails. He himself came down to fix things. He took on muscle and bone to communicate with, to reason with, to recreate his world. Just as he spoke it into being, in Genesis 1, in John, he comes in the flesh to recreate what has been broken. Jesus is God's word, God's will, God's purpose for humanity come down into our neighborhood to accomplish that good purpose for us. Just like on those first six days, 
God is speaking into his creation new life. Only now he does it in the person and work of his son, Jesus. The Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. That's the first term that John uses there, the first, for, first few verses uh, of his gospel. We'll talk about another one tomorrow. Apologies for getting this one up late today. Uh, but tomorrow morning, there'll be another one up about another term that John uses here in the first chapter of John's Gospel. And we'll keep looking at some other ones through this week that John uses. First, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming down into this world, for taking on flesh, to help us to know once again God's good design, his good purpose for this world. Through your life, through your death, through your ministry, continue to speak into us new life. Recreate us to be what you have always intended us to be. Help us to celebrate the beginning of that work this week. Help us to continue to grow into what you would have us to be eternally. In your holy name, amen. God be with you, friends. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Oh,